Atlas from Nachtblut, and you're listening to the Dan Chan Show on Hard Rock Hell Radio. Okay, I'm joined by Ablas. How are you, man? Hi, I'm fine. Nice to meet you, Daniel. Cool, cool. So you you guys are releasing your sixth studio album, Vanitas, on October the 2nd. I've, I've listened to it, and in fact, I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic album. The tracks have so much to offer. There's metal, there's 80s sounds, it's folky power metal. Are you happy with how it sounds? Are you, are you happy with the product? Yes, definitely. This time we had a lot of time for our pre-production, so we always tried a lot of things. That's also why there are so many different genres within the new album. It's so special for us, and I'm really happy, and I can't wait for the release date. Oh, I bet, I bet. And the, the band's been going since 2005, and you joined in 2016. How did the appointment happen for you? You know, were you a band, a fan of the band before? Um, no, I haven't been a fan of the band, but we're more or less from the same area in Germany, and really. Poor. Quite a few years ago, but 2006, 2007, so in the very beginning of the band Nachtblut, I also played in another local band. Yeah. And so we met on some shows and always stayed in contact over the years. And in 2016, when their recent bass player left, um, they just called me and said, hey, can't you join us for a tour, help out? And at that point, we just realized that we can work so good together that we said, okay, we have to continue this collaboration. Yeah. And yeah, it works. I mean, I'm quite new, a new fan of the band on this from this album. I didn't know much about you before. But I'd like to know what are the themes of the band's songs? You know, obviously for non-speaking German people like myself, we go along with the aggressiveness of the music and the Germanic language, which fits so well, you know, like Rammstein. What, what, what are the themes of the songs? Um, it starts from social criticism throughout over to religion and also, also like um, self-awareness. So most of the topics are very dark. Yeah. And it's like one of the songs called uh, Lied für die Götter, which means in English, um, Song for the Gods. Um, it's about gods and different kind of gods all the time. But yeah, the quintessence of it, it's, it just means I only need one god, and that's myself. Yeah, that's cool. So are you, are you anti-religion, anti the whole um, the, the politicized world as it is right now? Yes, so that's also why we talk a lot about religion, because there were so many bad things that happened in the history because of religion, um, but also nowadays. Without religion, there wouldn't be, have so many wars, for example. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, and d did you bring anything new to the band when you joined? You know, how many, how many albums have you done with the band? Two, I think, isn't it? Two, two, al two albums? Yeah, I've done two, two albums. Yeah, I started when we um, did Apostasy, the, yeah. the last album, in 2016 or 2017, I'm not even sure. Um, yes, Apostasy. I think I brought a lot of my ideas about how I like the kind of music because I also played in some other bands before. And yeah, sure, you have your own vibe, your own ideas you want to bring into the band. Yeah. And I think it worked out very well, yes. Cool. And obviously, I've got to touch on Rammstein. You know, how important is Rammstein <laughs> yeah. to the band? You know, do you enjoy being likened to them? Because I've read a few things where people have said that. And they have paved the way for quite a few, you know, German language bands over, and music over the, uh, throughout the world. Do you want to follow in their footsteps? Obviously you do. Yeah, the thing is, as soon as if you are a German band with German lyrics, yeah. um, every metalhead just recognized that, oh, this sounds like Rammstein yeah, yeah. for them, yeah. you know. Um, for us, it's not, we don't try to copy Rammstein and we don't try to sound like Rammstein. Oh, I agree I mean, with that, yeah. There is even, there, there's even one genre in Germany, which is called NDH, like Neue Deutsche Härte. Yeah. The, the genre is just what Rammstein sounds like. Mm. So deep, brutal guitars and the German deep vocals as well. And it's very, very popular in Germany. So there are many bands who sound like this. And if you compare Nachtblut, I mean, we have a lot of screams, those high-pitched screams. Yeah. Yeah. The, you, you won't find that in Rammstein. Oh, no. But I have to admit, for sure, I like the Rammstein music and we, are, we also listen to the music of them. And the sound is great. The music is great. So if something, or somebody tells us, hey, you sound like Rammstein, we don't think that's a bad thing. We just um, think that it's not of true I mean, but yeah is that okay that's actually okay for us it's typical for someone like me or you know a non-german speaker to just go straight to rammstein for uh for likeness but obviously you know it, it, you've got the great guitars there and everything but the vocals are almost like danny filth aren't they yeah actually <laughs> there's also one of the comments we saw online it's like hey this sounds like a mix between rammstein and um danny filth <laughs> yeah, that's good I'm, I'm glad i'm glad i got that wrong right so what are your uh, what are your personal influences then 
Um, there are actually there are t- two kinds. If we talk about music, I go from black metal, like yeah, Nagaworth, Cradle of Filth. Yeah. If you want to count that as black metal or yeah, yeah, gothic yeah. metal. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I also like some really nasty stuff like death metal or even grindcore. And it has to be some, yeah, I call it bands with balls. You know, it has to be something special. I don't like those bands which all sound the same. They have to have something special when you listen to them and you will always recognize this kind of band. I totally agree. And you know what? When I first heard the, the new album, uh, I listened to it this week and I was blown away by it. I really was. And it's, it's something so new for me. It's fresh. It's got so many elements. That's what I like about it. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's what, even if you don't understand the lyrics, you just hear it and say, okay, that's something spe- special. You would recognize it well, the yeah, next I mean, time. That's, that's a good thing that Rammstein have done for bands like yourself who probably want to break outside of the German Germanic language countries is the fact that people are embracing other languages. They're not just listening to the lyrics. They're listening. The music is just as important as the lyrics. Yes, indeed. And also, sometimes you don't need to understand every word. So I saw a lot of YouTube videos online, actually, like reaction videos to our own music videos, where some English speaking um, fans were listening to the music and they just tried to guess what the song is about oh, really? without understanding. <laughs> And you work, yeah. That's good to check that out. And, hey, and they got it. So it, it sounds good that also from the visuals we use, we can tell something. That's cool. That's very good. So how, <laughs> how would you like the band to be categorized in the music? I mean, do you like genres? What kind of genre do you like to be uh, put into? Uh, that's, always, <laughs> that's always a hard topic, actually, because I have to admit, I don't like genres at all. Mm. Because if you start categorizing something, yeah. it means... This category sounds the same. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially if we talk about metal. I mean, there were 2,650 subgenres in the metal scene. Mm. There, there were so many, so many genres because every band sounds special, starts creating its own subgenre. And yeah, mm. you don't have to do it. But if I read our own biography, we're called Dark Metal. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Dark Metal's good. And that's fine for me. It covers a lot of bases, that. That's good. So obviously, your English is impeccable. Probably better than obviously better than my German and probably better than my English. But have you ever recorded an English? <laughs> have you ever recorded an English language song? Is that something that would interest you? Um, with Nachtblut, um, no, there are no English songs at all. We have some Greek songs actually really? on some of our bonus CDs. Oh. Yeah, we just recorded one existing German song and translated it into the Greek language yeah. because it also sounds very, very harsh and very heavy with our singing style. Yeah. Um, but no, we don't have any any plans to record anything in English because that's also a part of our sound. This German vocal, this German style, there's there's actually no interest. Yeah, for sure, I've done a lot of English songs in the band where I've played before. That's also why I'm quite happy with my English because I played in a band uh, which was situated in London. Oh, really? Yeah, but but it's also about seven or eight years ago. Yeah. So. So, um, I've been to the UK a lot, also UK tours and all that stuff together. The band was called Sarah Jezebel Diva, um, which was actually the female singer from Cradle of Filth oh, with really? her own solo that's project. Cool. Oh, yeah. Cool. Uh, no, I think I know what you mean now. Yeah, I know what you mean. So what does the rest of the year hold for you guys now? Uh, obviously, have shows all been pushed back to 2021? Uh, to say it positive, um, this year we have a, a lot of topics to write new songs about. Um yeah, this means, yeah, we have our album release on October 2nd this year, and we're happy about that. But yeah, no more live shows this year. All shows have been postponed to next year. Big thing is we're just missing, because I really like the live energy, and I want to play the new songs live. I was just waiting for it. I was on fire, literally. And yeah, now I'm quite uh, upset that nothing's happened. So let's hope that in spring 2021, we can continue with our tour. So what songs from the new album can you not wait to play live? Um, definitely Laia Kinder. Yeah, great. Which was also the latest video. Yeah, the latest video. Because yeah, yeah. if I, I, I you played, hear the song... I, I played that on the show a couple of times. Ah, oh, perfect. So you know the vibe for this song. And just imagine yeah. on a really, really fully packed venue. So there's so much energy in this song. I bet it's going to be a killer. So uh, was the album pushed back for October? Or was it, was it always going to be October? Was it going to be earlier in the year? No, it was always October 2nd. But usually the tour would have followed just after the album, yeah. And obviously, um, you have mentioned that the dates are being pushed back to next year, the German and Austrian dates. Um, do you want to venture further out of uh, the Germanic countries? Yes, 
we definitely want to reach other countries, but um, we all we already have been because we are playing shows in China and Russia oh, really? since a few that's, years. That's cool. And as you said, it's it's surprising because we still have a German language, and even especially in Russia and in China, they can't even translate yeah. or, or lyrics so easily as you can do it with an English. But it works, and I also love a lot of energy. Yeah. And we are a very special band, especially in those countries, which makes it even more interesting for us. Of course. I mean, I, I spoke to Hodi but, from um, Foish once a few months ago, and they really want to yeah. break out the Germanic countries. And they even said the same thing about doing shows in Russia. You know, obviously, they don't understand the Germanic language, but they, uh, you know, they go crazy up there. Yeah, definitely. I don't know. I don't know why, but they like German music. So that sounds pretty good. Yeah. We, so, yeah, but the next time would be, uh, let's see if there are any shows in England in the I near future. So. That, or anywhere, in, anywhere else in Europe. So have you got any festivals lined up for next year outside of Germany? Uh, outside of Germany? No. I, I don't know, actually, to be, to be honest right now, because, yeah, because of all this Corona stuff this year, they have so many new plans and everything was postponed yeah. once twice and three times yeah. i totally lost control of everything i'm just waiting for, until somebody tells me hey you're ready to go you can play what's the nachblut stage show like but we have a lot of things left actually i mean or outfit a whole everything we do visually i mean yeah. we have all all makeup or stage clothes which yeah. is just something to, to watch for sure yeah um we also lose a lot of fire life but that's actually not what it's about. For me, it's about the energy we yeah, bring life. Because it. sometimes if the crowd goes crazy, oh, yeah. we totally go crazy with it. And there's also, um, just to go back to that Corona stuff right now, there are some shows happening in Europe. But yeah, you have to sit down oh, and no. don't, are not allowed to move. And a lot of bands are trying this right now. Mm. Um, we were discussing this topic and said, no way. We have, we have, we need the energy. We need the people in front of us screaming yeah. and not sitting down. No, that exactly. is just does not fit to our kind of music and to our kind of energy. If you, if you're an acoustic guitarist like someone like maybe Ed Sheeran or something, it's perfect. It's a perfect for them, but not for our music. It doesn't work. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, our blast of Nagblood. Thanks so much for talking to me. I hope you get outside of the Germanic countries next year, and I really want to see you live. If not, I'm gonna to have to come to Germany myself. And good luck with the album. Perfect. Thank you very much, Daniel.